Aloha Oinala. Welcome to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas, here Fridays at 3 p.m. This Friday, I have uh, Gary Hooser. That name alone, you know, he has been in and around politics in Hawaii for a very long time. And he's worn many hats, majority leader of the state senate, Kauai County, County Council member, many things. But in the last couple of years, Gary's been doing something very interesting in addition to all of the politics. He's been um, promoting progressive action at a deeper level by committing to two organizations. And instead of me trying to describe it, I'm going to let Gary try to describe it for us. Welcome, Gary. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for having me here today. And, uh, you know, I think that in, in Hawaii, perhaps in the world, that we're at a very special time right now that uh, this is a time for change. This is a time that uh, there's, it's a tipping point, uh, uh, I believe, uh, with stuff that's going on. Along. It has to be. I, I, I it so has to so. be. Uh, <laughs> And so I've been working with uh, people all over the state and uh, helped found two organizations, the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action, which is a 501c3, and the Pono Hawaii Initiative, which is a 501c4. And they both of them are uh, trying to uh, create change in Hawaii, uh, policy and politics. Uh, the 501c3 is focused on uh, education, and the C4, the Pono Hawaii Initiative, is on pretty hardcore policy change and po political change. So um, let's maybe, s the HAPA has been around for longer. A couple of years, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, so we're a little bit, so tell, tell us what the uh, experience of working uh, with, in HAPA and, and getting some of these bright um, minds well, energized. You, you know, like. with, with HAPA, we have, we have a statewide board, people on every island, uh, and it, it dawned on us about 18 months ago that we're all talking about why don't we elect better people, more progressive people, people who value uh, environmental protection, economic justice, social justice. Why aren't there more people like that elected? And we came to the conclusion that there wasn't good candidates. There were good people, but they didn't know how to run, and good candidates weren't stepping up. So we formed a uh, program called the Kuleana Academy. And the Kuleana Academy identifies uh, and trains emerging political leaders, if you would. It's nonpartisan. We don't support those candidates, uh, but we, we train them, and it's been a phenomenal success. So you've had a couple of cohorts, is that right? Yes, we're on our third one third that starts one right in now. September. Starts in September. Yeah. Do you already have all of the? Uh, we do have some slots open, and I encourage people to go to hapahai.org, H-A-P-A-H-I.org, look under Kuleana Academy, and there's still room to apply. Uh, to apply. It doesn't cost the, the applicant anything. It's a competitive process. Uh, we have a class between 15 and 20 people, and it's just a phenomenal program that, uh, again, identifies and supports, trains emerging leaders in how to run for public office, issues and advocacy, uh, leadership development, and things of that nature. So I was um, very excited when I saw who was uh, part of uh, the first couple of cohorts, mm -hmm. and very much looking forward to the next election. Just to, now, is, is there a commitment to run for office if you sign up for the Kuleana Academy, or? There's no commitment. Uh, there's no firm commitment. We're looking for people interested in being involved in the electoral process. Okay. Either run for, a, run for office in the near future or at some point, or to help somebody else run. Uh, that, that's the main thing. And there's no, I, I should say, there's no litmus test in terms of issues. So we don't, you don't have to be, uh, check a box that you, you believe a certain thing. We're looking for people who share our general worldview of economic, social, environmental justice. But beyond that, we're just looking for, for solid, solid people around the state. We had a big group from Maui. Uh, all islands are welcome. Fantastic. And that, that tends to happen on uh, it's weekends. Right? Yes. Yeah. We have the program is five weekends spread over three and a half months. Uh, we fly everybody in from the neighbor islands. We put them up in a, in a and a hotel where they stay for two days, high quality uh, uh, educators, trainers, coaches, uh, professional fundraisers, teach them how to raise money, professional communications people, teach them how to develop messaging. Uh, we brought in former governors to speak to them. It's a really top-notch uh, program. We're very proud of it. Okay, so that was the first floor. Right. Now we have the Pono Hawaii Initiative. Right. The Pono Hawaii Initiative is a totally separate organization separate boards, separate staff, separate budget. I'm the executive director on the Pono Hawaii Initiative, 
at all, president of the board of HAPA. That's the, that's the connection. You're the HAPA Papa. I'm the HAPA Papa. <laughs> Who's the HAPA Papa? The, uh, uh, now the Pono Hawaii Initiative has two branches of activity, policy and politics. And we want to affect change in both of those areas. So the policy side would be developing solutions, affordable housing solutions, uh, you know, environmental justice solutions uh, in terms of policy initiatives. Okay. So developing that is, those. That is such a big deal. So okay. let's just take a minute right sure. there. Okay. For instance, how do you go about the developing uh, affordable housing initiative? Well, you, you, first of all, you talk to those people that are in the business of doing that. Groups like Appleseed or FACE okay. or other advocacy groups who are focused on affordable housing. Uh, and then you start asking questions. You start drilling down. I posted on Facebook uh, a crowdsourcing question. You know, what should we do for affordable housing? And there was almost 300 posts of people giving suggestions. What Facebook page? Well, this is my own, Gary Hoosier. Okay. Yeah, so I, I did that. Uh, the Pono Hawaii Initiative has a Facebook page as well. So you start talking to people who know about housing. And then you start looking at what's realistic, what is within our constitutional legal purview, uh, what can the state and county actually do, uh, is it, how much does this stuff cost, and will it have tangible impacts in, in our lifetime, which I say in the next few years is my criteria. So we're in the process of doing that now for affordable housing. We want to develop initiatives, present them to councils or legislatures for action, hopefully, and then uh, also look at a ballot initiative. The counties, each county, the four counties have the authority or the power in their charter where citizens can go out and get signatures and change the law directly or change their charter directly. You can't do that on the state level. How, how much control do you have on the actual wording on those ballot initiatives? Well, the, the, the sponsors have total control. The sponsor being? So if the Pono Hawaii Initiative, working with other groups in the community, came up with, let's say, a proposed charter initiative or ballot or ordinance, we would develop the language working with our attorneys. Okay. And we would go out and get the signatures. You present those to the county clerk or the council, mm -hmm. then they then would put it on the ballot. They uh, wordsmith the ballot language, which <laughs> is an abbreviated <laughs> version, and that's what, therein lies the problem sometimes. Yes, yes. we, we uh, saw that in a, in a big way right. uh, this past election. But there has been, uh, on the neighbor islands especially, uh, several instances of people doing ballot initiatives and successfully. And so my goal would be to have one done in the city and county of Honolulu. It takes a lot of about 29,000 signatures. Uh, and But to find subject matter, whether it's affordable housing, which is, is the leading thing right now, or right. it could be environmental, it could be anything within the county authority. And you can make uh, broad strokes in policy change. Right now, the reason for our existence is the, the people in charge, the councils and the state legislature, are either moving way too slow or moving backwards, in our opinion. They're not as aggressive as they need to be to protect the environment, to help working people, and social justice issues. They're, they're taking tiny little bites or no bites at all. And I believe in the people that I'm working with that, that we require more. The, the condition of the world, the disparity between the very rich and the very poor, the degradation of our environment, climate change, these issues are real and they're urgent and we need to be, take bold action now. And if the councils and the state legislature is not going to do it, the people through this ballot initiative can take those big steps. So uh, for instance, um, last night I happened to come across a nice, I posted on my Facebook page, a nice seven minute outtake of a um, meeting on, on Hawaii Island with Russell Ruderman mm -hmm. and he described the, the process of, of um, why a lot of bills like the pesticide bills and the rat lungworm d disease bill, why they didn't pass and how they didn't get heard in, in, in committees because there's this culture of we don't want people to look bad. So what do you do with about that? I mean, how, yeah. how are you, Le and that's, that's one of the, 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 I think that our state government and to a large extent county government too is at a low. I, I served in the state senate for eight years and I've been watching this and, and being involved with it for 15 or 20 and I've never seen as dysfunctional uh, organization as what we've saw this in 2017. So what do we do about that? I think there's only two things we can do. One is to elect new people. And so Pono Hawaii Initiative, that's our second, is the electoral political side. 
we are going to look out in the community. We are looking out in the community now, looking for candidates to run for public office in 2018, and then we want to support them in alignment with our friends around the state. Uh, ah, and so cha changing people uh, and pushing hard on the policy. Uh, we, we, we can't afford just to sit around and wait. Uh, the, the legislature is, is either frozen, uh, pushed around by special interests, they don't want to make a decision, or they err on the side of big business and money. So what do you think the impact of having no Republicans in the Senate has been? I don't think that's healthy. I think we need a minority voice. And if it's not coming from the Republican Party, it should come from Democrats and progressives that are there. Or maybe and, another party. Or maybe other parties. The, uh, but right now, we, we will be looking to support people that will be more than likely running against Democratic incumbents as a Democratic. So that's kind of sacrilege uh, in, in a party perspective about competitive prim primaries. You know, encourage one Democrat to run against the other Democrat. You said the uh, Kuyana Academy was nonpartisan. Exactly. But um, that's different from the Pono uh, Hawaii, Hawaii right. Initiative. Is there a party affiliation there? There's or? no party affiliation. Uh, the uh, the Pono Hawaii Initiative will we'll look at all parties. Uh, we're looking at people who support our worldview and who, are, okay. who can win. Okay. And uh, the, the reality of it is the Democratic Party dominates uh, the politics in Hawaii. And I believe if you look at the platform of the party, that platform is a good, solid platform that supports the environment, it supports economic, it supports it's, these issues. It's beautiful. Uh, yes. And so uh, it's natural that that will be a lot of our focus will be on those types of candidates. But if a Green Party or some other party uh, emerges a candidate and, and they can win and they're willing to do the work, then we will certainly look at supporting them as well. The Kuliana Academy in Hapa is nonpartisan. And we, we actually have Republican speakers come in and speak to the class. We have Green Party speakers, and we have other people do that. We don't target races. We don't support the candidates. We're strictly, and, and I don't participate in selecting whoever the, attends the classes. It's a competitive process. People fill out a form. They're interviewed by others. The Point of Hawaii Initiative is different. It is uh, politics and policy. Uh, and the, the difference, the fundamental difference is the federal law and donation, how donations are treated. Ah, the the, the, the Pono Hawaii Initiative, donors do not receive a tax uh, deduction. Uh, on the HAPA is like uh, other, like probably think tech might be, where it's a 5163, it's for education, it's not a political thought. Okay, well I think this is a great place for us to take our little break sure. and then come back and talk more. Great. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your every day. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Living in this crazy world Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha.
Welcome back to Hawaii is my Mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas, and with me here today is Gary Hooser, the executive director of the Pono Hawaii Initiative, which has two arms, we learned. Yes. Policy mm -hmm. and politics. Yes. We just talked about policy. So let's talk about politics. Okay. Politics, and I want to, want to be clear, I'm a volunteer executive director. Sure. Uh, the, uh, the politics is, is facing the reality of changing the people that sit in the state legislature or on county councils. Uh, there, there are people there, you know, good people, people with good hearts that uh, believe in a different future than, than I believe in and that the people I'm working with believe in that will err on the side of big business, big money rather than the side of people and the environment. And I would like to support people that err on the side of people and the environment. And so I'm working under those parameters, if you would, and to say, well, how do we, how do we change, how do we move the needle at the state legislature? Yeah. You know, it, it's taken, uh, we still have not banned single-use styrofoam food containers. Oh. And how many oh. years have oh. we been working on oh. that? Yeah. Uh, banning plastic bags. It is crazy that it takes so many years and we're supposed to have a, a, a legislature and councils dominated by uh, people who, Democrats, who, who believe in this stuff, but yet we still can't pass it. Payday lending, a, a practice that preys on the very hardest working people and old people and, and that we can't cap interest rates at 32%. Year after year we've been working on this stuff and it's just, uh, it's just unacceptable. So how do, we, how do we change that? We can lobby and we should, we should testify, we should write letters to the editor, we should carry signs, we should march, but at the end of the day we need to change some of the people sitting in those chairs. Uh, and that's what the politics side of it is. is going out and looking for people and say, you know, that person would be, would be great. I wish they would run. And then asking them, why don't you consider running? And then supporting them and nurturing them for public office. I, I have to say that we have friends in the legislature. I don't want to paint them all with, with a bad brush. We do have friends there who are working hard on these issues. But a few more people, like-minded people, would move that needle and change the dynamics into a more uh, friendly uh, environment for the kind of issues that I believe we need to focus on. So, uh, as you said, this past session was, um, I can't remember the words you used exactly, but it was a disappointment, shall we yeah. say. Well, the previous ad, uh, ad said epic fail. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> uh, and the, the Star Advertiser called it an epic fail. Uh, Civil Beat called it a failure. I, I wrote a, a piece uh, on many, many levels. There were some bright spots. Yes, yes. Um, I went to a signing about the inmate um, ID bill. Mm -hmm. Now, before they're let out of um, prison, inmates will um, have IDs that allow them to uh, get jobs, uh, get a bus pass, all of those things. The really astonishing thing for me was, why did that need legislation? And why does it take so long to get, you know? And that's, that's part of the frustration. It should not. Uh, a lot of these things, again, like the plastic bags or uh, disclosure of pesticides, they are simple, basic requests that shouldn't uh, take so long to, to, uh, to, to achieve. Uh, and so the, the answer, in my opinion, is to look for new leadership, quite frankly. You know, if, if the leaders that are in charge are not fulfilling the community's expectations, and I don't believe they are, then the community needs to take ownership of its government find new candidates, support those candidates, and then stay involved in the process. It doesn't stop there. You know, a person can't just vote and then go, go back to their life. They need to take ownership of their government, and it takes work. A lot of work. And you have been at this for a very long time. And one of the things that's different about your path is you're not a lawyer. <laughs> I've, made, I've made a few laws in the past, but that was my life. And um, I, was, I was sort of wondering, what is your, um, what is the mix in these uh, Kuleana Academy, or um, I don't, I don't know if that you have um, chosen anybody yet through the Pono Hawaii Initiative to support. But um, what do you? Can you talk a little bit about how do you think that well, that mix of uh, att having attorneys is that a good thing? Is that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the we look at, at who would make uh, a good candidate a good leader. And it could come in all shapes and sizes. Generally speaking, the, the person would have some background or some experience in leadership. They would serve on, on an organization. They've been involved in something uh, in a leadership. It could be the PTA. 
It could be the Sierra Club. It could be some organization. They've uh, done some public advocacy. They've written some letters to the editor. They've testified. Uh, they've maybe helped somebody on a campaign or been involved in a party. Uh, but somehow they're doing something. They're not just talking about it. They're actually doing something. Uh, we have a good mixture of uh, emerging leaders coming out of the University of Hawaii. And I think that we need to get more of those uh, coming out of the law school. We did, this last class, we had 17 uh, participants, 17 students. And I believe about four of them were practicing attorneys. Okay. Uh, recent uh, attorneys, not, not all time. And the ages range from 20 years old of our participants to the, the 50s. Uh, we, it's easy to say young emerging leaders, but uh, all ages are, are welcome. And we have all ethnicities, uh, backgrounds. Again, we have all islands. Uh, because leaders come in all shapes and sizes, and it depends on the community that they're representing. That's one of the first lessons. Uh, when, when someone starts talking about uh, what they hope to accomplish, we remind them that what does their community want to accomplish? They might be focusing on, let's say, environmental issues. That's their passion, but the community might be education. It might be traffic. It might be other things. So they need to be in touch with their community so they can represent the community. They don't need to let go of their passion, but they need to be in touch with the community. Uh, okay, that brings up a question. I've, I've been a, a staffer at the legislature for the past mm -hmm. two sessions, and one of the things is that, that sort of interesting disconnect bet between the calls you get in the office about the potholes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there are a lot of that. And then the sort of uh, or the homeless, and then and then the but the the larger issues that are needing attention are our environment, our, our water supply, our sewage treatment uh, facilities, our infrastructure. How do you get people to care about those things when it's not something they see, but it really impacts us? You know, I think. The, the potholes are there every day. You know, it's in front of your house. You want to yeah. get it fixed. You yeah. know, or if it's a bus stop, or if it's something that directs you, impacts you directly, it, it is a lot more uh, top of mind for people. I have to say, I believe the last two years, uh, with the uh, Bernie Sanders campaign, followed by the election of uh, Mr. Trump, uh, followed by the, the that, or involved at the same time with the TMT issue and the, the GMO issue. There's been a tremendous upsurge in the involvement and awareness of people on public issues. I think people are more aware than ever that they need to get involved and they need to pay attention. And so, I mean, when did we ever have this that many women march uh, in, in the state of Hawaii? You know, or, I know that was that was uh, a glorious, yeah. glorious yeah. moment. And yet, what did we see actually on the floor in the legislature? Um, with with um, the our, our women legislatures, uh, um, so um, it's, you know. Yeah, you know, I I served obviously I served eight years in the Senate, eight years, two four year terms in the Council, and there's a couple of of fundamental rules that I've learned that I believe every person who serves in public office uh, understands, and and the, one of the main ones is you can't serve unless you get elected. And it's not a bad thing to have that on your brain all the time. And so every decision you make bears on your election. And, but they want to stay in office. Uh, but they have to, and so that, that both is, is a uh, frightening, freezing kind of thing, but it also is something that you have to do something. And if people understand that, uh, that's what drives politicians, then that's where you have, that's why we have to run candidates. That's why we have to publicly say, okay. we're not happy with the work you're doing. And, and, and to be clear, I don't believe in attacking the person, not attacking what's in their heart. Because I believe uh, legislator A may be pro-development, but doesn't mean he's getting paid off by developers. It means he looks at the world a different way than I do, you know, in terms of values. Uh, I might lean toward the side of environmental protection. He, might, he or she might lean on the side of development and jobs. And that's the way the world works. Right. But I need to find people who, who, uh, who are more interested in preservation than development to, to push the, the, the world that I want to see for my children forward. Okay, so one of the things is glacial pace. Mm. Um, what, what do you think we can do about that? You know, glacial pace has a price. 
you know, a real, a tangible price, it, uh, a price endangered species are being lost every day. Yeah. You know, climb, sea levels are rising. People on the street dying, literally dying. Yes. Uh, so yes. glacial pace, we can't just wait till next year. You know, and that's what I hear, that's what's so frustrating as well. We'll do this next year. Well, people are getting hurt. People are, then they're in the planet. And so we, a glacial pace is not acceptable. And that's why uh, 2018 is gonna be a pivotal, pivotal, pivotal year. Um, and that's what we need to focus on. It's, uh, you know, the elections of, of 2018, have, we have to see change. We have to see change at a local level. And I think we can set an example here. And, and because if we can focus on 2018, then I'm hopeful that uh, we can mobilize people and, and to, to, for that, this final, I shouldn't say final, but this big push during the next year. Okay, but so digging a little more in this glacial pace thing though, it's, um, you know, I, I had high hopes because, you know, absolutely a one party state. We just really can't call each ourselves anything else anymore, that that, that was really going to make, okay, the Senate's going to be on it. They're just going to be able to get stuff done. And that didn't happen. That didn't happen. No, uh, I agree. Uh, and it's about changing the dynamics. And the good news is that small numbers matter. So in the Hawaii State Senate, adding three new progressive, green, people-friendly, bold, transparent, I know it's asking too much possibly, <laughs> but at, adding three new people. No, keep on it. Three, just three. Three. Could, okay. could throw the whole leadership of the Senate to an opposite direction. Uh, wow. In the House, because it's about numbers. So there's 25 senators. So what's the most important number in the Hawaii State Senate? 13. 13. 13 is a majority. 13 can run the show. Three uh, added to other good people that are already there could shift that dynamic. In the House of Representatives, four or five could do the same thing. Uh, it empowers other people who are like-minded, who are already there but are in a minority. Uh, one person speaking out uh, empowers other people to speak out. One person being bold empowers other people to be bold. Gary, I can't believe it. Our time is up. But we're le ending on a very high note. That is something we can sink our teeth into. Three in the Senate, four in the House of Representatives. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it.